Hello, this is Mrs. Ridgway, and I am going to be covering Word Chapter 4, Enhancing Page Layout and Design. Please turn to page 4-2 and 4-3 and look at the different elements of desktop publishing. We are going to be creating the newsletter that you see on these pages. Beginning with page four, I opened the document and I renamed it newsletter. I have my ruler showing and I have multiple pages showing and I'm going to turn on my show hide. I'm on page five to insert continuous section breaks in the document. We are to zoom to 120, so I'm going to increase to 120. In the document, click at the beginning of the third paragraph, which contains the heading, Happy Birthday. On the ribbon, we're going to click Layout. And in the page setup group, we're going to click breaks. Notice the next page and continuous page breaks. These are the most often used breaks. Now, step four, we are to click continuous. And then a short dotted line, if you'll look up in the blue area, just above where we where the cursor is blinking, uh, there is a line indicating a continuous section break appears right up in that blue shading at the end of the preceding paragraph, although you might find it hard to see. If there was more white space to the right of the line of text, you would see a longer line with the words section break continuous. You'll be able to see the section break text more clearly when you insert a new, the next one. Okay, so scroll down to page two. At the beginning of the shaded paragraph, classics in audio form. We're going to insert a continuous section break here. A dotted line with the word section break continuous appears at the end of the preceding paragraph. Click at the beginning of the next paragraph, which contains the text, Animal Farm, George Orwell. And we're going to insert another continuous section break. A dotted line with the word section break appears in the blue shading at the end of the preceding paragraph. Now that you have created sections within the newsletter document, you can format the individual sections as if they were separate documents. Turn to page six. We're going to set the custom margins for sections one, two, and three. Press Control plus Home to get to the top. To position the insertion point in section one. Okay, up here at the top, Metropolitan Library System and Information and Imagination for our community. This is section one. Happy birthday all the way through the end of the words, the sentence, for a demonstration, see Leo Jordan at the Central Library, just before the section break. That is section two. Section three is this blue shaded, shaded area with classics and audio form centered. And then section four is the list of books and authors at the very end of the document. Okay, so at the very top, 
we pressed Control plus Home to position the insertion point in Section 1. In the Page Setup group, we're going to click on Margins and then Custom Margins to open the Page Setup dialog box. Change the left and the right margin settings to 0.75 inch. So I'm going to change the left to 0.75 and the right margin to 0.75. Click OK. The blue shading expands slightly, slightly on both sides of the, of the paragraph. Number four, on page one, we're going to click anywhere in Happy Birthday. Okay, so we're in the Happy Birthday heading, and this is now Section 2. We're going to set the margins. So click on Margins, Custom, Margins, and change the left margin to 2.5, and click OK. The text in section two shifts to the right, and you see more white space to the left. Number seven, scroll down to page two. Click the shaded heading, Classics in Audio Form. And that will position the insertion point in section three. Now we're going to change the left and the right margin settings to 0.75. Click on Margins, Custom Margins, the left to 0.75, the right 0.75, and then click OK. And this extends the blue part. On the ribbon, we're going to click the View tab at the top. In the Zoom group, click multiple pages. And then step 10, we're going to save the document. So go up to your quick access toolbar and click save. Page seven, formatting text in columns. Text meant for quick reading is often laid out in columns with text flowing down one column, continuing at the top of the next column. Click the Columns button in the Page Setup group on the Layout tab, and then we're going to click the number of columns you want in the Columns Gallery. Step one, click anywhere in the list of audio books at the end of the document to position the insertion point in section Four. On the ribbon, click Layout. In the Page Setup group, click Columns. Then we're going to choose more columns at the very bottom. Choose three columns. Turn the page. And then we're going to choose um, OK. Section 4 is now formatted into three columns of the default width, although the third column is currently blank. This will change when we add more formatting elements to the newsletter. Change the document zoom to 120. And then scroll down and you can see the list. Save your document. Keep in mind that you can restore a document or a section to its original format by formatting it as one column instead of three. Okay, page nine, step one. Make sure the layout tab is selected on the ribbon. Click at the beginning of the first audio book title and author 
Animal Farm, George Orwell. So I'm going to click to the left of Animal. Okay, uh, click at the beginning. Okay, press the Shift key and then click at the very end of the list of books. The entire list of audio books is selected. In the paragraph group, click the paragraph dialog box launcher. It's that little bitty square next to paragraph. Paragraph group, move to the right, click the little box. In the uh, indentation section, which is towards the middle, click special arrow and then choose hanging. And now we're going to change the by setting down to 0.2 and click OK. Okay, so notice that some of these have indented in by 0.2 inches. Now we're going to be inserting symbols and special characters. Let's turn to page 10. Take a look at the top of page 10, figure 4-6. These are some of the common topographic characters. The M dash, the smiley face, copyright symbol, trademark symbol, registered trademark symbol, fractions, arrows, and so forth. Be cautious not to um, confuse the difference between trademark symbol and registered trademark symbol. So, for example, if you type in parentheses a lowercase tm, you'll get the trademark symbol. If you type in parentheses a lowercase r, you'll get the registered trademark symbol. Now, at the bottom of the page, we're going to insert the registered trademark symbol, and we're going to explore the symbol dialog box. Use the navigation pane, all right, that is our control, F as in Frank. Well, first I need to deselect. Okay, control F as in Frank. Use the navigation pane to find the listening to literature collection. Okay, it locates it in our document. And then I'm going to click in the document before I close the pane. Click at the end of collection. All right, I'm gonna, and let's see, position the insertion point between the N and the period. All right, so I'm gonna click at the end of collection before the period. And I'm going to type in parentheses a lowercase r, and then you'll see the superscript symbol for the um, registered trademark symbol. <clears throat> okay, step four on the ribbon, we're going to click the file tab and then go down to options in the pane. Click on proofing to the left in the pane. Click auto correct options. Review the table at the bottom of the auto correct ta tab. The column on the left shows the characters you can type. And the column on the right shows what autocorrect inserts as a replacement. As you recall, I was telling you earlier that if you type, like my daughter types or hears with, W-H-I-T-H. And so we would type in, in the, the first column, we would type W-H-I-T-H. In the second column, we want to replace it with W-I-T-H each time she, she types it incorrectly. Scroll down to review the autocorrect placements. So let's just kind of use the down arrow and scroll down so you can see all the different symbols. Autocorrects. Okay, and then cancel. Cancel again to take us back to our paper. On the ribbon, click the insert tab at the top and then go to the far right and click on symbol. Click more symbols. 
the symbol dialog box opens with the symbols tab displayed. Next to the symbols tab, you'll see the special characters tab. Scroll down the gallery of symbols. Okay, so I'm going to first of all click uh, Arial Black, we'll say, and then I'm just going to scroll up and down so that you can see the different characters. And I'll choose another font. And this time I'll do stencil so you can see the different ones. Scroll up and down. And then an interesting one is to go all the way down to let's see if it's on here. Wingdings. Wingdings. I'm going to click on wingdings. And so you get these different picture, these little picture symbols that you can put into your paper. Click the special characters tab at the top. The characters available on this tab are often used in desktop publishing. Notice the shortcut keys that you can use to insert many of these special characters. Click cancel <clears throat> and turn to page 12. An object is something that you can manipulate independently of the document text. In desktop publishing, you use objects to illustrate the document or to enhance the, the uh, page layout. We're going to be completing the newsletter and we're going to be inserting some graphic objects or just we call them graphics. We um, there's different illustrations that you can insert into uh, the newsletter. We can insert pictures, we can insert shapes, graphics, 3D models, and more. At the bottom of page 12, an inline object behaves as if it were text. Like an individual letter, it has a specific location within a line of text, and its position changes as you add or delete text. In contrast, you can position a floating object anywhere on the page with the text flowing or wrapping around it. A floating object has a more fluid connection to the document text. It is anchored to an entire paragraph. So if you delete that paragraph, you will also delete the object. However, you can also move the object independently of that paragraph. An anchor symbol next to an object tells you that the object is a floating object rather than an inline object. Look at the uh, illustration at the top of page 13. It shows you a comparison of inline object versus floating object. And you'll see a picture of the little anchor. And anytime you see the anchor, then you know it's a floating object. Wrapping text around object. To transform an inline object into a floating object, you just simply apply a text wrapping setting to it. First, you would click on the object to select it, just like you would select a picture. Then click the Layout Options button next to the object. It looks like a little bitty square. And then click an option in the Layout Options gallery that opens up. The bottom of page 13 in figure 4-9 shows you the, the various text wrapping options that are available in the layout options gallery. We most often use square and tight and maybe sometimes we might be using in this exercise the, um, I'm thinking maybe in front of the text maybe. All right, so page 14 inserting text boxes. You can choose to add a pre-formatted text box that's already created, or you can create your own text box from scratch and adjust its appearance. We're first going to insert a pre-formatted text box that's already created, and then we'll learn how to create our own. On page 15, page 15, we're going to insert we're going to insert a pre-formatted text, uh, text box. And uh, this one is called a sidebar 
it's designed to look good positioned to the side of the main document text. A sidebar is typically used to draw attention to important information. Bottom of page 15, number one, scroll up to the top of page one. Click anywhere in the happy birthday setting or the heading itself, happy birthday heading. Change the zoom level to multiple pages. So go up to view and then choose in the zoom group, multiple pages. On the ribbon, click insert tab. So let's go up and click the insert tab. Number four, in the text group, we're going to go all the way over to the right. In the text group, click text box. And this will display the text box gallery. And then we're going to use the scroll bar to scroll down to locate ION sidebar one text box. Okay, it's this one right here. Click on it. And this will insert the pre-formatted text box. Number six, on the ribbon, click the drawing tools format tab at the top. Okay, my format is already open. And then I'm going to move to the far right to um, change the size of this box. So move to the far right, click in height, the shape height, type 4.3, and then click in the width box and type 1.5. Press enter and notice that the, the uh, length and the width of the box has changed. Change the zoom to 120%. And next we're going to need to drag the text box down below the first two paragraphs. To make this easier, uh, we're going to use words alignment guides. So in the arrangement group, we need to turn it on. So look up at your quick access, uh, not the quick access, but the ribbon. Look at the ribbon and look in the, um, for the align button, which is in the arrange group. Click on align. And then we need to choose, if there is not a check mark, you need to click to use assignment guides. If you see a check mark, it's already turned on. And in my case, it's already turned on. So I'm going to simply press the escape key to get, to, uh, get rid of the gallery. Position the pointer somewhere over the text box border. So I'm gonna move over here. Place it over the text box border. And it's going to change to an up, down, left and right arrow. And then we're gonna click it just one time and it changes it into um, a solid, you know, from dotted to solid. And your layout options button appears to the right of the text box. It's a little bitty square. Looks like it has a little frown on it. Or maybe you could say it's a rainbow. Step 12, with your pointer positioned over the border, all right, so we're going to be moving it, so put it back over the border. We're going to hold the mouse button and then we're going to drag the text box down so that the top of the text box aligns with the first line of text below happy birthday heading. All right, so we're going to drag it down and using this guide, Move it kind of up and align it with it's time to celebrate 75 years. Okay, if necessary, drag the anchor icon to position it to the left of the blue shaded paragraph. Well, that's not necessary because mine's already there. Okay, now we're going to be changing the text wrapping setting for the text box. A pre formatted text box. Uh, inserted through the text box button on the insert tab is by default 
a floating object formatted with square text wrapping. So if I were to click on this little bitty square, you will see it is automatically by default with text wrap square. Page 18, change the zoom level to 70%. I'm going to deselect, go back down to 70%. Number two, click the layout options box. So I'm going to click back on the table. Okay, so I clicked on the line, make it a, from a uh, dotted line to a solid line, and it brought up my uh, layout options box. And um, we're to click on the options box. and then click uh, any of the other options in the layout options gallery so that you can get an idea. So I'm going to go ahead and click and just notice what it does to the different uh, okay so we've clicked each one and so um, observe how the document text in the text box shift position uh, we explored trying several of the options. Now step four, we are to click in the in front of text. And this one is this last one, in front of text. And then we're to close. So we've gone from square to in front of text. On page 19, Step five on the ribbon, click the drawing tools format, which is showing here at the top. And then in the arrange group, which is to the right, we're going to click the wrap text command button. Verify that the fixed position on page is checked. Okay, this setting helps ensure that the text box will remain in its position on page one. Even if you add text above the paragraph, it is anchored to. So however, if you add so much text that the paragraph moves to page two, then the text box will also move to page two. To avoid having graphic objects move around un unexpectedly on the page as you add or delete other elements, uh, be sure to check this setting. Mine is checked, so I am good, and I'm going to press Escape. Adding text to a text box. Now that the text box is positioned where you want it, with the correct text wrapping, we can add text to it. In some documents, text boxes are used to present new information, while others highlight a quote from the main document itself. A direct quote from the document formatted in a text box is known as a pull quote. You can also insert text from another Word document by using the object arrow, which is, uh, we will look at the object arrow on the insert tab. Okay, so bottom of page 19, we're going to zoom to 120%. And then in the text box title bar, we're going to click sidebar title. And that selects it and we're going to type new operating hours. Click the placeholder below the title bar to select it and then press delete. Press your delete key to get rid of all that information go to the insert tab at the top. So we're going to click the insert tab and then we're going to move to the right to the text command group and choose object. So click the arrow, the down arrow next to object and we are wanting to insert information from from another file document. So we're going to click text from file and then we are to let's um, navigate to Word Chapter four, so I'm gonna go in here and I've got to locate my data files. 
right here. Oh, that's Excel. Gotta get back out. Right here, Word. And then chapter four, and we're working on the module. Okay, we're going to click the support WD4 hours. And that shoots the information right into our sidebar. Okay, let's see the operating hours information. It's inserted directly. Uh, the text was formatted in nine point calibre when it was in the other document. And it retains that formatting when you paste it into the newsletter document. So next we need to um, change the font size to 11 points so that it's much easier to read. So we're gonna go to home. Well, first we need to select. So we're gonna select. And then go to home and go from nine to 11. We probably need to also do this right up here. Let's see, that's at 10, let's go to 11. Okay, with the um, insertion point located in the last paragraph, oh, let me deselect here. Okay, with it in the last paragraph, it looks like, let me scroll down here, We are to delete the blank, any blank, if you have anything down below here, like a paragraph mark, then you are to, um, with the insertion point located in the last paragraph, we're going to press the backspace key to delete the blank paragraph and then click and drag the pointer to select all of the text in the text in the text box. Okay, so basically they're doing what I did a while ago. And so they're showing you how to uh, change the font size to 11. Okay, on page 21, step 11, click anywhere outside the box to deselect and then save the document. Go up to your quick access toolbar and save the document. Okay, on page 21, a text box is considered a shape, just like the other shapes you can insert through the shapes button on the insert tab. Page 22, we're going to draw and format our own text box instead of a free uh, pre-formatted box. Scroll down to display the bottom half of page one. I'm gonna click on this, make it solid. Okay, so we scrolled down to see the bottom half of page one. On the ribbon, click, click insert. And then in the illustrations group right here, we're going to click shapes. In the basic shapes group, notice that they're divided by lines, rectangles, basic shapes, arrows, etc. Well, we're gonna to go to the basics shapes and we're going to click on the very first item under basic shapes. This is text box. Choose it. Your mouse turns into a dark simple plus sign and we're gonna position the pointer in the blank area and we're going to draw. Uh, it tells us to draw about a six inch, start at the six inch mark and draw across and, and you don't have to be too perfect here because we're gonna change it. We're gonna change the size. So we're just gonna draw a box. That's what I will do and not really worry with what the book is saying because we will change it. Don't be concerned about the text box exact dimensions or the position on the page. All right, on page 23, we're going to use the shape height and the shape width boxes on our drawing tools format toolbar at the top. Okay, so the ribbon. Let's go to the ribbon and go to height. Change the height to 2.5. Okay, so we want precise 
precise measurement. And so that's why we type 2.5. And then we need the width to be 1.5 if it's not already. Drag the text box as necessary to align its bottom border with the last line of text on the page and its left border with the left edge of the text box above. All right, so let's do this. We're going to drag, click on it, and then drag down and place it. Let me go kind of right there. All right. Now we need to add some text to the, to the blank text box. So we're going to be copying text from, a news, from the newsletter and we're gonna paste it into the text box itself. Select the, the third paragraph after getting around town heading. All right, so getting around town and we're looking for the complete schedule is not final yet. So the third one. This one, let's see, right here. The third sentence, the complete schedule is not final yet, but the bookmobile will definitely make appearances throughout the county all summer long period. Okay, now we're going to copy this into the box. They want you to use, according to the book, use the keyboard shortcut shortcut. So press control C to copy and then click inside the box and control V as in victory. The newly inserted sentence is formatted in 11 point just as it was in your main document. On uh, the next page, page 24, step uh, three, Add quotation marks. At the uh, end as well. Beginning and the end of the sentence. So it's clear that the text box is pull quote. Okay, on the ribbon, we're gonna click the drawing tools format up at the top. And then in the text group, Click the align text. All right, so we're gonna go right here to the text group and click on align text and choose middle. We want to center it in the middle of the box. The text is now centered between the top and the bottom borders of the text box. Uh, note right next to it, you'll see direction. You can always change a direction of your text. And that's interesting. I wanted to point that out to you. Okay, so we did that. Scroll down. Okay, so we're gonna just click anywhere in your document. Scroll down if necessary so that the bottom of the text box is positioned just above the bottom of the screen. Okay, in the shape, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and click inside the box here. In the shape styles group, click more. So here's our shape styles group. I'm gonna click this down arrow for more. We're gonna move so you can see live preview as you move across. Let me do that again. The more button and then move across. So you can see live preview before you even uh, choose. According to number eight, we are to choose colored fill, blue accent five, dark blue. Okay, so that may be this one right here. Colored fill, blue accent five, yes. So we're gonna click on it to color um, the background of our box. In the shape styles gallery, uh, we've clicked it, the style is applied, and the gallery closed. Now we need to make sure the text box is located in a fixed position on the page. So if you need to, click, click the uh, line so that this little layout options box comes up. And we're needing to make sure that 
the fixed position page is on so that it doesn't move to the other to the next page okay they have us going another way which is to go up here to the wrap text and then check to see if it's checked right here but i just simply did it in the box okay now um let's see if you select the entire paragraph to which the text box is anchored you would okay so they're just basically wanting to show you let me close out of here and then we're going to click one two three oops one two three to select the entire paragraph um we triple click this paragraph below getting around town heading the entire paragraph and even the text box are selected if you were to press delete at this point you would delete the paragraph of text and the text box if you ever need to delete a paragraph but not the graphic object that is anchored to it then you should first drag the anchor to a different uh, paragraph and then take care of your business step five click anywhere in the document to deselect the text and the text box and then save the document. Now we're going to insert another pre-formatted text box. Scroll to page two and display the top half of page two and then click in the first line of page two. Go to the ribbon and click insert. In the text group, we're gonna go all the way to the right and choose text box and then locate ion sidebar like we did prior to you know a little earlier uh, ion sidebar and then click the text box border and that will display the layout options button click the layout button and choose in front of text if necessary let's verify that the fixed position on page is checked which it is and now we're ready to drag the sidebar over okay step six says drag the text box left so it's left side aligns with the left edge of the blue shaded paragraph so okay with the top of the text box aligned with the first line of text below the heading a fond farewell which is on page two okay if you want a need to look at page 26 and it shows you a picture of where to to place the box all right now step seven we're going to change the text box height all right so we've clicked on it and we go to the far right and we want the height to be 3.5 3.5 and the width to be 1.5 1.5 inches notice the box has changed to that size step eight in the title bar replace the placeholder text so we're going to click sidebar title and replace it with book festival reminder in the main text box click the placeholder text down below and then press delete on the ribbon we're going to click insert locate the object go to the text group click the down arrow for object, we're going to pull some text from another file. Navigate to your Word uh, 4 module folder, and we're going to choose Festival, which inserts it right into the box. Delete the extra paragraph at the end of the text box. Okay, so I see the little extra paragraph. So I'm going to press the backspace key Increase the font size to and the text and the title to 11. So we're going to select all of the box information 
and go to home and choose 11. Click anywhere inside the text box to deselect. Okay, let's see. Make sure that your text box is positioned like the one shown on this page. Click anywhere, and deselect, and save your document. Okay, page 27, we're going to be inserting drop caps. A drop cap is a large decorative letter that replaces the very first letter of a paragraph. Drop caps are commonly used in newspapers. You'll see them in magazines and newsletters to draw the reader's attention to the beginning of an article. So to insert drop caps in the newsletter, we're gonna scroll up to page one and click anywhere in the paragraph below happy birthday. So I'm just gonna click in that first line under happy birthday. We're gonna click on the insert tab at the top and then go to the text group of commands and you'll see drop cap. Click the drop cap command and then we're going to choose, you have choices of dropped, okay, or in margin. Notice how it changes as you move the mouse on these and then the book wants us to choose drop cap options. Choose dropped, that's the style we want. And instead of three lines, we're going to choose two lines. And then click, uh, click OK. And notice that the I for it takes up two lines rather than three. The default settings applied by these two options are fine for most documents. So. Uh, we're gonna move on. Click the, okay, we did that. We chose two, and then we're gonna click okay. We did that, and it inserted the drop cap. We're on page 28, number eight. Near the bottom of page one, insert a similar drop cap in the paragraph below, or the paragraph following, a fond farewell. So we're gonna click, and then we're gonna make sure the insert Ribbon is showing. Go to the text group, click drop cap, drop cap options. We want it dropped and we want two lines rather than three and click OK. Step nine on page two. All right, so let's go to page two. Insert a similar drop cap in the paragraph followed following the heard any good books lately. Heard any good books? Click here. Make sure the insert ribbon is showing. Go to the text group. Click drop caps. Click on dropped. Oh, messed up. So we got to go back. And instead of dropped, we're going to click drop cap options. Make sure that the lines are dropped down to two and then click OK. This concludes the first session of chapter four.